nothing will happen to me. I will go to Kigali and I will enjoy my vacation. This will be testimony. I will testify your goodness, Lord. I will glorify your name. All these obstacles. This devil that is trying hard. This devil. Thunder will fire this devil. Holy Ghost fire. I say, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> now that time where if I had anointing oil, I was going to spray the whole airport. I was going to spray the entire hair pot with anointing oil. I was going to smear from my hair to my hands. Hi guys! How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are well. I am great. Thank you so much for clicking. Thank you so much for coming back to watch my videos. If this is your very first time meeting this bold, beautiful, dark skinned girl from South Sudan, you're highly welcome to my YouTube channel. I go by the name Marie Chigo on YouTube, and I'm a new YouTuber based in Juba, South Sudan, but currently in Kigali, Rwanda. So, you guys. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of story time and this is something that happened and I don't want to let it go like that. I want you guys to know. So I'll start with when I plan to come to Rwanda. Um, I was supposed to start my leave from work on 30th of January 2023. So before that, I think it was around... 14th no if not okay around 12 like that my supervisor hit me up asked me that i should go for a field mission of like 10 days which will start on 16th and i'll come back on 28th and i was like yeah that's not bad because if i'm coming back on 28th and i'm starting my leave which of which i was planning to fly that same time it's not bad so I accepted and it was pushed to 18th, so I traveled on that day. So being pushed on a, to 18th meaning I was to come back on 30th. So I decided to push my leave to 3rd and I went for that mission. Mind you, that location, there's only flight twice in a week, right? So I was to come back on 30th. And my leave starts on Friday 3rd. When it reached uh, 20... I think it was 27, 26, like that. I remind my supervisor, I'm like, Hey, madam, I... You need to book me. That was on a Thursday. That was on a Wednesday. Meaning, because for our booking at work, you should at least book ahead of time, like two working days. So that you can you can be able to travel on time. Because there are a lot of humanitarian that are traveling, so... I reminded her, plan ahead of time, I request my booking so that come that Monday on 30th, I was only going to have flight on on that on Friday, which is the day I'm traveling out. And mind you, I have already bought my ticket to Kigali. When I reminded her, she was like, she's going to consult our other boss. Then they talk about it. Time went up to the next day and it was too late for booking of Monday. And I was like, I cannot afford to miss this unless if there's another flight in between but there's no flight at all guys i was frustrated to the label like i started journaling like i was writing down and there are a lot of things that happened so that time i was i was in so much emotion mixed emotion i was thinking a lot of things but deep down my spirit was telling me i am not missing this but of course i was to worry because i don't have ticket i was not book thank god they requested my booking like for emergency and they managed to book me before i could see my ticket guys that time i had my i had malaria i did not know i felt sick to the extent that i was vomiting i was not eating i was dehydrated i was so weak that <laughs> two days my ticket came i did not know i was just sick the time I got my ticket confirmed, I was going on that Monday. I also took my medicine. So Monday was the last day for my malaria medicine. I'm like, okay, thank God that even this sickness came earlier like this. Because if it was to come when I'm on vacation like this, what happened? I'm not going to enjoy. So 
I took my medicine and I traveled to Juba. I came when I came to Juba. Those of my mom was a, were around. She came back from Khartoum. I could not show you guys. I could not block. I could not do anything because I was doing a lot of things. I was so busy to the extent that I did not want just anything to do with camera because I don't have that time. Like I don't have that much time. So I I processed document for my grandma. They were to travel on Wednesday so that at least I can have time. Yeah, they were travel on to travel on Wednesday so that at least on Thursday I can have time for myself. Then Friday I'm good to go. Guess what? That night my sister's daughter was extremely sick that we could not even sleep. The next day we had to take her in the, to the hospital instead of traveling to Uganda. I prayed. I said, God, what did I do to deserve all this? I prayed for my sister's daughter. She was injected, and I just prayed God let her sleep so that they can travel. So that I, because I don't want to leave them in Juba, right? I want them to go at least first. I know they have reached safely. Even if I'm traveling, at least I know my family is safe at home. So thank God she slept that night. On Thursday, they traveled. I took them to the bus park, and from bus park, I went direct to market. I went bought things, and this is how I shoot the other video of preparing to travel so the next day in the morning i was doing a lot of things i was excited i felt like i had enough time because my flight was in the evening around 5 pm so i had a lot of time i was washing things i was cleaning my house you know the excitement like just counting hours knowing that i'm traveling then around 10 i called my driver so that he can actually come and pick me at one because also i don't want to delay I told myself I don't want to miss. I want to go there on time, then wait for my time to board. Mind you, that was the same day Pop was coming to Juba. When I called my driver, my driver told me, Madam, we better go now because at one roads are going to be blocked because all the security in Juba is out, is on the road, the police like they literally was not even they were not even allowing cars to move anyhow i was like okay so i just showered very fast i dressed up i was smart so i blocked a little bit because there was that tension on the road even myself i was not now in the mood to talk to you guys i was like i'm going to talk to you after checking then i'll update you and all that reaching at them nearby the airport they stop us, they ask the car, where are you going? And they're like, he said, we are going to the airport. And they told him, you cannot go. Guys, I had to photo. Trolling with my back. Thank God that I did not have a lot of clothes. So I just packed few. So my back was light. And I only had this cross back that was smaller. You guys have seen. So I went. Now, reaching at the airport, I knew that Ethiopian Airlines have not open yet. So... I went to the restaurant. I I took lunch. You guys have seen from that video. After taking lunch, I stayed. That was around midday. I stayed up to one, two. Something told me, let me go and check Ethiopian Airlines. Maybe they have opened or something. When I checked, in, indeed, they were working. So I checked in. Before I could check in, they asked me of my return ticket. Guys, I bought one-way ticket to Kigali. Because I know from Kigali here, I'm supposed to go to Uganda, to my family. Then from Uganda now, I can go to South Sudan. I did not have flight. I did not have plan of flying from Kigali here direct to Juba again. Or flying from here to, to Uganda. They told me, Ethiopian airline policy uh, said, if a passenger is traveling especially the Kigali government, according to them, you must have two ways ticket. Because if something happen, who is going to be responsible? I'm like, what do you mean? Like something happened? Like I am going, I'm coming back. I have work to do in Juba. Like I have a lot. I cannot remain there. And if I'm remaining there, why would I indicate that I'm going for vacation? I'll just say maybe I'm going for business. Kigali is an open country where people are doing business. A lot of people are staying there. So why would I hide what I'm going for? I said, uh-uh, I don't plan to come back to Juba. I am 
planning to go to Uganda from there. Okay, where's your Ugandan ticket? I don't get tickets. Then they ask me, do you want to cancel your flight? Hey, Jesus Christ. I said, say what? I canceled my flight. Kwa. What do you mean? They said, if you don't have return ticket, you cannot go. I said, okay, what's the way forward? They told me you have to book right now. Mind you, I was not ready for that. But because I don't want to miss this my Kigali uh, trip, I said, okay, check for me how much. They check in the system. You guys, it was, hey, they were telling me $450. Only from Kigali to Entebbe. I said, hell no. I said, okay, can I, can I buy a ticket with another airline? They told me, yeah. I went to Ugandan airline. I asked them if they will have flight from this day to this day. They told me, yeah. I asked them, how much? $300. Ah. Guys, these people are trying to mess with my budget. They were messing with my budget, seriously. So, I was convinced with the 300 compared to 450 But then, I decided to call my friend. Uh, Dasan, if you are watching this, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So, I called my friend. I'm like, Dasan, I have a situation like this. What can I do? He told me, okay, let me send you someone's number that works with Rwanda here. And they can help you book in Juba there. I'm like, good. So he sent me the number. I called the person. And the person was like, ah, from Kigali to, to Entebbe is $250. The flight is going to be at 1 to this and this and that. If you want to use KQ... You, it, you would pay the same price, but they are going to take you there in Nairobi. Then from there, they will bring you back to Entebbe. I'm like, ah, okay. I've not been to Kenya, so I was willing to, like, go be a Kenya. I don't care. All I need is just to travel. I want to move by any chance. Killing two birds with one stone is my goal. So, if it works, uh-oh. Oh. Guys, so I... I said, okay, it's fine. Then the guy told me he cannot come to the airport because the road was closed. I wish I took pictures, but you cannot take pictures. I wish I could show you how congested that road was. Police were everywhere. The civilians were side of the road making noise, singing, dancing, cultural dance and all that. Like, cars are not moving. There is no car moving. So I told the guy, what, where can we meet? The guy told me, let's meet Crown Hotel. Crown Hotel is not too far from airport, but it's also far to some extent when you have situation. I came out. I reached at the taxi pro, uh, place from the airport. I asked the guy, can you take me? The guy was like 7,000 SSP. I'm like, what do you mean? 7,000, you guys, with the distance, even if he was taking me up to where, I don't know, like unless if it is a long trip. It makes sense. But that Crown Hotel, from airport to Crown Hotel, it can never be if it was not because of that day. The guy told me, if you like, oh, oh, but 7,000. I said, is that to and fro? Will you return me back? The guy said, even going right now, I don't know if they are going to allow us. Coming back, I don't think so. So we can try coming back, but you pay me another 7,000. Because of tension, I said, no, voila. I rent. Now reaching there. I sent my passport photo to this guy. He booked the flight for me. He told me, now, um, I don't know if what came to him. This is how I came to believe that God works in mysterious way. Like, God uses people. Hey, God. God really helped me that day. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, the guy told me, I don't know even, I did not complain to him. I just told him this situation, they are telling me not to go and all that and this and that. So I don't know. Let me just buy this ticket right now so that I can go and show them. And they will give me my ticket so that I can go and sit and wait. Because people are almost boarding 83. Hmm. You guys, this guy told me, or you can pay $85. I book for you the ticket. Then when you bought, I can cancel the flight. I'm like, ah, what are you saying? He's like, yeah, I can give him $85. He can book for me the ticket. Then when I bought my plan, I read my final destination. He can cancel the ticket. Then from there, I can connect on road or whatever way I want to use. It's none of his business. I'm like, oh, God, bless you for me. God, bless you. 
God bless you. Guys, I remove hundred dollar. I just gave that guy I come out to. Now you wait. When I came out, I paid this guy his seven thousand. I told him take me back. He said they will not even allow him to go with the car. So even him is going back footing. I say, hey, do near Liguana. Now I have got the booking, but time is going. And even I have the fear of maybe they will even tell me not to go because it was already three. Pop has landed. They don't want anybody going to airport. Hmm. You guys, I I just started running. Because there's no car. I started running. They asked me, where are you going? Where are you going? I'm like, hey, please. I'm traveling. Please allow me to go. They told me, okay, don't run. I said, okay. But guys, which one is don't run? I'm running out of time. When I am seeing like there are a lot of civilians, I'll just run. I could get people parked like this, but that time I just said, God, I don't want to be rude. Let me be the nice person that I am. Don't make situation make me look bad. I was not even pushing people. I could just say, I could just tap someone like that. Said, please let me go. Let me go. I'm traveling, and they will just open for me. Like they will open, and I'll run. When I approach police. Then I'll walk slowly and they'll ask me, why am I running? I said, but I'm missing my plight. I'm traveling. They told me, my friend, whether you're traveling or not, you have to walk because cameras are on and you're at airport right now. So if they see you on camera running, the entire country is going to start running. You know, there's tension already, so don't run. But guys, is it easy not to run? Hey, if you ask me on a normal occasion to walk that distance, me, I will not do it. Leave alone running. But that day I ran. I ran. Thank God I reached airport. Reaching there, I got this lady. I showed her the ticket. She went through it. Then she like, it's okay. Okay, where am I going to stay in, in Kigali? Ha. I said, I'm going to stay in a hotel. Where is it? Uh, where is the receipt? The guy that booked for me did not actually send me the receipt. Kumbe, I just came to know. He booked for me the place. Then afterwards... The, the owner of the hotel, I think someone came and paid one year and he's, he decided to cancel my booking and said, let's give to the other person. So the guy could not tell me because he did not want to give me pressure. So he started looking for a new place. That's why he could not send me a receipt. Hey, I do not want even to contact this guy right now because I was in hurry. I just called the other friend of mine who is a Rwandese. Also, he lived here, Dasan. I called her son. I'm like, Dasan, another situation. I asked Madam, what if I live at home? She told me, if you live at home, then give me the home address. I said, okay. Dasan, send your home address now. Dasan sent the home address. Before you know it, this woman don't disappear. This woman disappeared. Like, she was going somewhere. This woman stayed like for 15 minutes or plus. I was waiting for her. Let me tell you, everyone was checking like there was nobody. I was alone. And I was the first person who was checking in. Hey, <laughs> me, I was just sweating. Ha! Huh. God, I did not know traveling's headache like this in my life. Like, I, <laughs> traveling have issues. Oh. <laughs> so I waited for this lady until another stop. Their staff went and looked for her. They could not find her. This lady told me, okay, just show me the um, show me the address. Let me take the picture. I'm going to, to give her when she comes. Now, when we were communicating with the son, there was a message like, you are telling me I should not be worried. Everything will be okay. Oliver will be waiting for me at the airport with the taxi. They will drop me to the hotel. So when the lady was taking a picture of the address, she also captured those conversations. Me, I do not know. They cleared me. They gave me my ticket and my boarding pass. I went and sat. I said, thank you, Jesus. I thought it was over. This thing was not over, you guys. So as I was sitting, something kept telling me, what if something else come up? Before I knew it, Madam came and said, uh, excuse me, sister, can I sit here? Hey, my heart dropped. I said, now what is it again? What is it in my heart? But I pretended to. I was very strong. I said, I am not going to panic. And if it is on normal days, that day I was going to be too stressed, but I refused the stress. I said, God, mm -mm, I'm not about to stress for no good reason. Let me just do the needful. Let me do what I can do as a human being. And if it has failed, it has failed me. I cannot kill myself. She said, she told me, eh, Madam, who is Oliver? Hey, when I had Oliver again, now I'm like, what is it? 
I said, Oliver is my friend who is coordinating for me, my accommodation, and picking me at the airport. She's like, yeah, you know, because uh, with the Ethiopian airline, when you have you, when you are traveling with one way tickets, and anything happens, you will not be returned with the other airline that you are using because I book another airline. That's what she was trying to repair to. So she was telling me, like, if anything happened, I have issues with my document or what? What if they are deporting me back? They are going to bring me back with Ethiopian airline. So I need to sign some waiver that says if anything happened and I'm returned with Ethiopian airline, I am going to pay for that ticket. Hey, <laughs> condition not the finish. Oh. This woman was just telling me, I don't want peace. I want problem, always. I said, no, me, I want peace. I'm traveling. I said, madam, no problem. Me, in my heart, I said, God, I know you are not going to allow anything to happen to me. I have all my documents. I have everything. My COVID-19, my yellow fever, my passport is valid. I have my ticket. I have my return ticket. So what the hell is going to happen to me that they will default me back? What did I do? nothing so i said make i sign up madam brought things she wrote my name what what my ticket and she asked me to sign me i signed i wrote my name mm. she told me okay how much money do i have at hand cash i said hey what is this i told her she told me oh that amount is not bad i'm asking because the uh, the migration officers sometimes they can ask if you don't have enough cash they can default you back and again it's good that you have someone that is coming to pick you at the airport uh if you stay for more than an hour or over an hour at the airport they will deport you back i said i have people who are waiting for me they know my flight i'm going to reach at midnight and i'll keep updating them like when I'm taking off from here, I'll update them. When I reach Utopia, I'll update them. When I'm taking off also, I'll update them. They know everything I told them. He told me, okay, I wish you safe journey. I know nothing is going to happen to you. I said, thank you, my dear. When that woman went, I said, God, nothing will happen to me. I will go to Kigali and I will enjoy my vacation. This will be testimony. I will testify your goodness, Lord. I will glorify your name. All these obstacles. This devil that is trying hard. This devil. Thunder will fire this devil. Holy Ghost fire. I said, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> now that time where if I had anointing oil, I was going to spray the whole airport. I was going to spray the entire airport with anointing oil. I was going to smear from my hair to my hands. But I did not carry one. But my heart is clean. I just prayed. When we took off, even to block for you guys, even I could not tell you I'm done with checking because I was just scared. The entire experience was just traumatizing. When we bought it, took off, I said, Alhamdulillah. This is how I updated you guys in the toilet. When I reached Ethiopia, I'm like, hey, Jesus. When I reached Kigali, you guys are going, you have seen already. You saw how I shout. Hey, let me tell you, when you want something and you have peace, do it. I could have gave up, but I know it is the devil that is trying. At if you are a child of God, you will always like every day you are at war with the devil. The devil will always try hard to take away your happiness. But for me, let me tell you one thing: if you have ever doubted god in your life if you have ever doubted that god does not exist come to me this is my life you see like this is a living testimony is a clear evidence that there's god somewhere trust me god has been there for me god has done things for me god has done things that i cannot even say when i'm talking like this it's not even about this kigali thing i'm just trying to tell you how god can stand with me in so many situations like god has really done it and I just get to know that God loved me so much and he created me with a purpose and a purpose that shall be fulfilled. I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but I thank God. So that's it, you guys. If you have traveled before and you had issues like this with migration or the booking agents, 
like airline agent i don't know or anything like this let me know in the comment section and please if you are traveling with ethiopian airline make sure you have two ways ticket for them to know that wherever you're going you're going to come back to your country otherwise you'll have issues like me i will not wish what i went through to happen to anybody in this life because it was like a very traumatizing moment mind you this is a vacation that i planned for so long and it has been failing and finally that it's working and things are coming at the last minute so i wish you guys the best thank you so much for watching up to this point i love you and please don't forget to subscribe like comment share if you are randis let me know if you are south sudanese kindly let me know where you're watching from and let me know what you like to see about rwanda in this specific visit i love you guys bye bye bye